I'm Sydney Reed. I'm a freshman on the volleyball team and I just transferred this coming January. I'm MJ Hamill. I'm also a freshman and I'm studying biomedical engineering here. I'm Jade Demps. I'm also a freshman. I'm studying biology. I'm Devin Robinson. I'm also a freshman and my majoring in communications and minoring in Spanish. Black History Month is important to me. I feel like it shouldn't just be a month. Like Black history isn't just Black people, like it's everyone's history. Schools, they don't teach us about Black history. They'll teach us simple like, oh, Martin Luther King, be like, they, and they put the pictures in black and white to make us think it was so long ago. It really wasn't. It really wasn't that long ago. Like those pictures can be put in color. Like people just want to like, oh, Black history, and then let's just forget about it. Like it's only in February. Like no, Black history is everybody's history. Going forward with there being more communication over media, people are able to like find out more things about what happened, like things that you aren't taught in school, even things that just should be in regular history, but then they're not even in Black History Month. So I think that's really important. Especially since we're athletes, I think like in the coming years, it's been more about like celebrating Black athletes and like other leaders in our community. I actually just watched like a short documentary thing that was on ESPN this morning. And it was just talking about the different Black athletes that have really just like changed like different games, like Michael Jordan, he really changed like the game of basketball and Tiger Woods has changed the game of golf like completely. And without them, we wouldn't have sports like how we have them now. So I think that's also really important to talk about because like what Devin was saying, like without a lot of black people's creations, inventions, leadership, our lives would be completely different. To me, it's especially learning, like relearning a lot of the history that was whitewashed and taught in public school and you know, a lot of it sadly still has to be like self-prompted. You really have to go out and research on your own. And it's, it's important to actually know true history and it's really not that long ago. I feel like the death of George Floyd was like the breaking point of black people holding in like not rage or just like we're fed up with like being like racism isn't like like spreading it's just being recorded now you can't just be like oh like i like support black people but i'm just gonna be quiet and not say anything like that's basically going against them like silence is violence and you have to be outwardly anti-racist now otherwise it you're just not with us if you're not gonna speak with this this is as we know clearly has been going on for so long and people will be like okay well why can't you protest peacefully like people have been doing that for a year. Back when people were getting sprayed with fire hoses and they were protesting peacefully and we should continue doing that, clearly there's been no change. After this happening and there's so many people that are speaking out, like like Devin said, silence is violence. So when people decide, and I've had to even like call out some of my own friends, it's it's a really crazy time that like after that happened, it also just helped me realize like, okay, these are people that actually love and support me and it's really crazy just like seeing everyone's true colors like what devin said it was the breaking point just of holding in a lot of pain young black kids we've seen it on tv like it's like oh my gosh another black person like is innocently killed or like is wrongfully done or whatever it is and that those protests back in may and june like they really just kind of emphasized what's been going on and like i also feel like not a lot of people understand that the black lives matter movement didn't start this past summer it's been going on since 2013 and the fact that not a lot of people know that or recognize that is kind of sad and unfortunate because we've been fighting for not just seven years, for a long time for against injustice. George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, like all those deaths and many, many more have really just like capitalized that and like showed us that it was our breaking point and there needs to be a change. I think this past summer and thankfully, but sadly for me and a part of my white privilege is the fact that it wasn't necessarily my breaking point. It was just the point at which this movement started to affect me. And it's sad that it took that long. Someone who grew up in a very white town and never really even saw any of these issues like in person or even online because I just, I didn't choose to seek it out. It shouldn't have taken years and years of pain and suffering and just like anger built up in order for someone who isn't necessarily directly affected by this to realize it. 
But I think that that was a difference of like why it is finally making national news, why it's finally people think that it's a new thing when it really isn't is you know, it's just the fact that it's finally affecting everybody as it should have been in the very first instance of injustice.